Hey everyone, Nigel and Luke here, and welcome to another edition of Crimes of the Week International. A New Zealand man who thought that he was helping out a neighbor got quite the surprise this week when he was told by police that he had unwittingly aided a criminal in the theft of property. According to reports, the incident began when an Auckland business owner named Kelly Marie recently purchased a tiny office that she planned to work out of in her plant nursery in the suburb of Fanuapai. The 4.2 by 2.3 meter wooden building was located on a property about 7 kilometers away in Massey, and after the purchase, Kelly began to make arrangements to have it transported to her. This included having the tiny office's deck and awning removed so that the main structure could be sent separately. At approximately 2 p.m. on November 19th, a bearded man in a truck showed up at the Massey property where the tiny office was located, where a neighbor, assuming that he was authorized to move it, began to assist him. The neighbor helped the bearded man back his vehicle down the driveway and even load the structure onto the back of his truck. At the time, it likely seemed like the neighborly thing to do. However, it turned out that the bearded man was not associated with the property owner or with Kelly in any way, and had simply shown up to steal the tiny office. Once it was all loaded up, the man took off, and the tiny office hasn't been seen since. Authorities are now hoping that additional people who may have witnessed the crime might be able to help identify the unknown thief. Apparently, this is not the first time the Massey property has been targeted by thieves, and given the equipment that was needed to actually move the tiny office, police believe it's likely that the crime was premeditated. At the time of this recording, the investigation continues. Authorities in Taiwan's Nantu County say that a man's unbelievable laziness recently earned him a stern warning from police after he was allegedly caught repeatedly using ambulances as a free taxi service. According to reports, the man, identified only by the last name Wang, lives right next to a hospital and has frequently been calling ambulances and faking sickness to avoid walking home from the local supermarket. Astonishingly, it said that the supermarket is a mere 200 meters from Wang's residence. Over the last year, it's estimated that Wang did this a whopping 39 times, simply because he didn't feel like walking. The hospital recently uncovered Wang's scheme when they noticed that after being brought to the hospital, he always left before speaking to doctors or receiving treatment. It was at that point that they contacted the police. According to local media reports, Wang did not take kindly to having his scam uncovered and verbally harassed police officers when they came to speak to him about what he had been doing. Though at the current time it appears that Wang is not facing any consequences for his actions, police warned him that if he's caught abusing the ambulance system again, he'll be facing a large fine as well as other possible charges. Authorities in Nigeria's Kaduna state say that they are investigating a suspected mass kidnapping case after several vehicles were found abandoned along a highway connected to the country's capital. According to reports, the incident was uncovered when eerie video footage emerged on the afternoon of November 21st, showing a number of empty vehicles stranded along the Abuja-Kaduna highway. At least one person was found dead from gunshot wounds at the scene. While police have released few official details so far, locals who claim to have witnessed the kidnapping say that at least 40 people were taken by armed gangs who patrol the highway looking for victims. According to the witnesses, the attackers ambushed the vehicles as they were driving, shooting into them until they were forced to stop. They also claim that at least five other people were killed close to where the vehicles were discovered, in nearby Katari village. The area is said to be one of the most notorious havens for kidnappers along the highway. At the time of this recording, government security forces have reportedly been deployed to the area. It's unclear if they have any leads on the whereabouts of the kidnapped victims. Authorities in the English city of Plymouth say that they are investigating the tragic suspected murder of an 18-year-old woman this week 
after a multi-day search turned up what are believed to be her remains. According to reports, Bobby Ann McLeod was last seen alive around 6 p.m. on November 20th, when she left her home in the city's Leham area to visit some friends. When she never arrived, her friends became concerned and immediately alerted police. During their investigation, authorities quickly zeroed in on a bus stop on Sheep Store Road. It's believed it was here that Bobby Ann intended to catch the bus into the city and where she may have been abducted, though this has not yet been confirmed. After three days of searching for the missing teenager, a body was discovered near Bavisand, less than a 30-minute drive from her home. While an official identification has yet to be made at the time of this recording, sadly, it's believed that this was the body of Bobby Ann. On the same day that the chilling discovery was made, it was reported that two men had been arrested on suspicion of murder in connection with the case. All we know about these two men so far is that they are ages 24 and 26, and that the older of the two men has since been released. Investigators have been given more time to question the 24-year-old. It's unclear what information led investigators to either of the two suspects. At the time of this recording, investigators are still searching various areas around Bobby Ann's home, and have also cordoned off a road in Bovisand, leading to a cafe and parking lot. Authorities in the South Korean county of Hapcheon say that a local Buddhist monk was far from finding inner peace this week when he allegedly killed a neighbor of his temple during a dispute over noise. According to reports, the incident began when the neighbor, identified only as a man in his 50s, began to routinely complain about the noise level of prayer sounds that were coming from the local Buddhist temple. The conflict between the temple and the man had been going on for some time, when on November 21st, one of these complaints set off one of the temple monks, identified only as a man in his 60s. In a fit of rage over the complaint, the monk allegedly confronted the neighbor, beating the man to death. At the time of this recording, the incident is still under investigation, but the monk reportedly remains in police custody. Authorities in Japan's Hyogo Prefecture say that the arrest of a 40-year-old man this week has resolved not just one, but two different cases, after an investigation into a hit-and-run led them to a surprising and disturbing discovery. It all started in May of this year, when a hit-and-run accident occurred in the city of Shiso. The accident left a man seriously injured with broken ribs, and though the suspect initially managed to get away, police were eventually able to track down the compact car involved in the crime. However, when police spoke with the car's owner, a middle-aged woman, she was completely confused. She denied any involvement and said that she hadn't even driven that day. Further digging revealed the shocking truth. The woman wasn't the suspect that police were looking for. In fact, she had been victimized by the same person. During their investigation, authorities discovered that a suspicious man had been seen wandering around the woman's house for a period of at least eight months before and after the hit-and-run case. Even more chilling, it turned out that the woman's home had been bugged, and the man had been listening to her and routinely stealing her keys so he could drive around town. He was the one who had been driving the vehicle on the night of the hit-and-run. The evidence ultimately led police to a 40-year-old man, who is said to be the president of a heavy machinery company. He was arrested on November 18th. During questioning, the man admitted that he'd stalked the woman. Apparently, they were former high school classmates, and the man said that he wanted to know everything about her in order to get her attention. Though based on reports from witnesses, police say they believe the man was stalking the victim for at least eight months, this is just when the man was spotted. The actual time period that this behavior occurred over is still unknown. The man now faces numerous charges, including hit-and-run, loitering, and violating the country's anti-stalking laws. If you're a regular viewer of our channel, you might remember that in one of our long-form videos back in May, we covered the mysterious disappearance of two elderly Australian campers who went missing while on a trip to the Wongetta Valley 
early last year. 74-year-old Russell Hill and 73-year-old Carol Clay set out for their trip in March of 2020, expecting to return roughly 10 days later. Instead, they were never heard from again, and their burned-out campsite was found on March 21st. There were no signs of Russell or Carol anywhere. The case made no sense to those who knew Russell. He was an experienced outdoorsman and was extremely familiar with the area because of his former career as a logger. Many believed that it was unfathomable that he would have burned down the campsite deliberately, nor would he ever have left his campsite unattended with a fire going. This week, after more than 20 months with no apparent answers, police announced that they were confident that the case would soon be solved. They had arrested and charged a man with Carol and Russell's murders. The suspect has been identified as a 55-year-old pilot from Caroline Springs named Greg Lynn. According to reports, Lynn was first spoken to about the disappearances last year because it was believed that he was in the area at the time. However, he claimed that he had not seen Russell and Carol. It's unclear exactly what led investigators to become confident enough in Lynn's involvement to arrest and charge him this week. But much of the information that has been released at this time concerns his four-wheel drive utility vehicle. Police released CCTV footage of a vehicle matching the one that Lynn owned earlier this month and seized it at the time of his arrest on November 22nd. At the time of this recording, Lynn remains in custody. Police say that they have now located a specific search area of interest in the greater Alpine region, where they are hoping to finally locate Russell and Carol's remains. Authorities in the Colombian department of Cundinamarca say that they are investigating the tragic and mysterious deaths of two people this week after a high-profile hairstylist and his mother were found dead in a home in the town of La Calera. According to reports, the lifeless bodies of 47-year-old Mauricio Leal and his 67-year-old mother Marleni were found in Mauricio's home at the Arboreto condominiums on November 22nd. They were discovered by Mauricio's brother, Joni, who said that he had previously been unable to reach both his mother and his brother, though Mauricio's death would likely have generated headlines no matter what, given his work as a well-known stylist for celebrities. The mysterious circumstances of the case have now taken on a life entirely of their own. For starters, reports differ on what condition the bodies were in and where they were found. Some reports state that Mauricio's body was found on the floor with a knife still in his abdomen, and his mother's body was found with several stab wounds. Other reports state that there were no apparent injuries to Marleni's body, and that both bodies were found on the bed. Adding further intrigue is the fact that a note was found on the bed apparently written by Mauricio. It said that he loved his family and asked them to forgive him, but that he couldn't take it anymore. Finally, the letter said that he left everything to his brothers and nephews. Though the letter could have been a reference to the painful chronic illness that Mauricio suffered from, authorities say that they are still trying to determine whether he was actually the one who wrote it. Just the day before the two were found dead, Mauricio made a post to his Instagram that seemed to suggest that he was in good spirits. While Marleni's death has been ruled a homicide, Mauricio's death remains under investigation. In terms of a third party being involved, because the door to the condo was apparently locked, it's unclear how an intruder would have gotten inside, though some reports say it's possible someone could have gotten in through a window. The handle of a second knife was also found at the scene, and at this time, it appears that authorities have not recovered the blade. At the time of this recording, the case is still under investigation. That brings us to the end of this edition of Crimes of the Week International. If you're a fan of the new series, don't forget to tell us in the comment section below. While you're there, make sure to subscribe to Crime Zone for more true crime content like this, making sure to hit the notification bell to stay up to date with our latest videos. Thank you for watching.